Okay, New York's water supply is unique because um, back in the 1990s, the uh, EPA was requiring the water, the city water system to um, do something about their water supply to deal with the growing population. So they had to do one of two things. They had to either make a filtration plant or somehow expand the supply. EPA was recommending a filtration system, a man-made plant. But what New York ended up doing was using the watershed instead by preserving the watershed to make that as the filtration system instead. And that ended up preserving land. It was more environmentally friendly, but also did the same job that the filtration plant would have done. Okay, where our water comes from when we drink out of the tap in New York is it comes from our watershed, which is a collection of streams and rivers that flow into reservoirs. And from those reservoirs, the water flows through large tunnels called aqueducts that go to um, a filtration plant that gets out things like little rocks and uh, straw and stuff like that. And then the water gets sent into New York City through other large tunnels. And from there, it goes to even smaller pipes and that end up reaching our uh, faucets in the city. When that water is flowing through these wetlands and streams, it actually gets filtered naturally by the forests and the streams themselves. They actually take out contaminants. So it's kind of a natural system that filters the water for us, so we don't need that plant as long as we keep these areas intact. What New York City realized was that instead of building a really expensive plant, and in the 1990s I think it was estimated to be a $3 billion plant, they decided to um, they decided to just preserve the wet, the, put all the money that they could into preserving wetlands, and it ended up being a lot less expensive, and it saved the city a lot of money. But at the same time, it's very environmentally friendly because all these wetlands are preserved. Well, it's important to explain that the process is not something that happened at one time. It started in the mid-90s as a way to deal with the growing demand for water. But the process is ongoing and it's a constant challenge for the DEP, the Department of Environmental Protection, that is in charge of the watershed area. But it's also, uh, and, and also the nonprofits that work with them. So it's a constant process of them working with the people that live in the Catskills where the main area of the watershed is. It's a very big area and that supplies about 95% of our water. And what they've had to do is um, work with the local people, farmers, um, there's also landowners there, and really make it work for them too. They've done some, they bought some land there in order to preserve uh, natural areas, but they've also worked with the farmers and taught them how they can be more uh, friendly to the water supply with their farms. And They've also worked with landowners and made it work so that people can make a living in upstate New York while the watershed is also preserved. And this is something, because New York is always growing and the demand is always growing, it is a constant process and it's still going on today of educating more people and getting more people to be in cooperation with the watershed. And that's not an easy process, it never has been, um, but it's made a lot of progress over the last uh, 10 or 15 years. The watershed area is really like mountains with streams and there's also swampland, but it's really a big area. So there, it consists of swampland, hills, valleys, it's a very big area. And it kind of overall, it's kind of shaped like uh, where all the water drains in one direction because of its shape. And the, there's a larger watershed in the country, like the, um, all water flows into the Atlantic on the east coast and on the west coast it flows into the Pacific. And those are all larger watersheds and they all consist of smaller watersheds within them. The water starts in small streams up in the hills and oftentimes it, it, th those streams get filled up by rain and snow melt. And those streams collect into larger streams, which collect into larger rivers, and they end up going into reservoirs. And the Department of Environmental Protection reserves reservoirs so that water can collect there. And then from those reservoirs, it travels through aqueducts, which are basically large tunnels that carry huge amounts of water. And um, it's actually millions and millions of gallons a day. Those, that water gets transported um, through a filtration plant that doesn't really, it, it basically uh, 
takes out large pieces of, of contaminants that get caught in the water, but not like any, uh, it doesn't do a lot except screens out the water. And then from there, that area is in um, the Croton watershed, which is north of us, and then it goes into another large tunnel, which goes down to um, Brooklyn, Queens, and Manhattan, and gets, and then from there it goes in smaller pipes and goes to your tap. And they manage to keep it clean all the way until your tap. I do, and it's tested regularly. It's actually, uh, it's uh, in that way because it's tested so much. That is one of the reasons why it's safer than bottled water. The EPA regulates uh, our tap water, so it's very stringent uh, regulations. Whereas bottled water doesn't have the same regulations. They're actually regulated by the FDA. And the FDA um, has different uh, standards. Um, they're becoming more the same now, but for a while they've been less regulated. New York is very good. Um, all the, there's a few cities that have decided to uh, preserve their watershed as opposed to um, using big filtration systems and oftentimes this makes uh, the water much more high quality. There's um, Boston, San Francisco, and, um, and Portland all have really huge watershed programs like New York. But the unique thing about New York is that the New York, New York supplies the most amount of people. There's 8 million people using the water system and it's, it's one of the biggest water systems in the world, yet pretty much completely done by conserving uh, watershed areas and uh, wetlands to do that. Tap It is a network of cafes and restaurants that uh, serve people tap water for free in New York City so you don't have to buy bottled water. Um, and what we're trying to do is create a convenient alternative to bottled water because when you're out and about and it's a hot day and you need some water, um, the first thing you might think of doing is going and buying a, bottled wa a bottle of water. And water, buying bottled water is really wasteful when the local water system is so good. So uh, the problems with buying bottled water is that uh, you're buying a plastic bottle, which is very bad for the environment. And um, it's also expensive. Um, usually bottles of water are $1.50 in New York. And what Tappet is doing is providing an easy alternative where you can take your own refillable water bottle and get water for free at one of our partner locations that are all over the city. And then you won't need to um, buy that water and you save money and, and help the environment. Well, what they can do is they can go to tapitwater.com, um, and we're also on uh, Facebook and Flickr. Um, and but at our website, you can download a map that shows all of our locations in New York City so you know where to find water. And you can also use a feature on the website where you search where your, your location is, and it tells you the nearest place that you can find uh, free tap water. This is Olu Gittens reporting.